You're welcome back. Uh, it's still the breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Right now, we're looking at uh, another security issue or the same security issue. Uh, we've been talking all this while. This time, uh, it's Canada that has given travel advisory to her citizens a few days after the U.S. did same uh, to her own citizens. Remember that the U.S. was saying even those people who are in Nigeria should be careful and uh, not uh, congregate in uh, big hotels in big uh, cities and all that in Nigeria. They should be very, very careful. Now, Canada has said, unless it is absolutely necessary, do not come to Nigeria or do not go to Nigeria. And worst of all is that the operations of the embassy in Abuja has been shut down, has been suspended. That's the word that was used, but, you know, it's the same thing, shut down for now. And uh, we don't know when they will open and why that is. So... We have a security expert this morning who will be uh, helping us to assess the security situation in Nigeria and what we need to do uh, so that these kind of things will not be flying around anymore because now it is Canada and U.S. We don't know which other country will do the same thing and which country will bar our people even from traveling to their countries. We have the pleasure of welcoming this morning Mr. Augustin Agwe Ega. A security expert. Good morning and welcome to the show, sir. Okay. Well, we're looking at this security issue. Security is a concern in Nigeria, and uh, we just saw that the federal government has budgeted more money for security than even any other sector of the economy in this uh, supplementary budget. Yet, this is the time we're hearing this travel advisory, this security advisory from U.S. and now Canada, and we don't know who, uh, who else. Let's begin with your personal assessment of the security situation in Nigeria before we begin to deal with the implications uh, of uh, this travel advisory that these countries are given, giving. Okay, thank you. Uh, when we take a... A look at the country risk assessment of Nigeria uh, from the from right from the time of the elections till now I can see that we've not had uh, a very uh, stable security uh, why because there's still a lot of grievances from different angles regarding the INEC issue and then the uh, the court cases by the Supreme Court their grief parties are still not happy. They still feel that their candidate is not there or they are not there. Uh, that is a very big issue of concern to us because those are indicators of a crisis in any nation or instability. Also, we have the issue of uh, Namdu, Namdi Kalu's case that is still, is still in the detention of the DSS. And the people from his region are demanding his release. Uh, that is also a concern for us. And like I touched last time, I said um, we have international security and the national security. Of course, from the international security angle, we have a very serious, if we are not experiencing it in Nigeria, at least we are experiencing it economic-wise. We have uh, the rippling effects on many economies now based on the Israeli and the Palestinian issues going on. We also have uh, Russia and Ukraine, and we have some instability in Syria, and the Iranians also train their threats. And like I said before, I said most of uh, uh, some misguided minds will look at the conflict in Israel and Palestinian as a Muslim and a Christian issue. In Nigeria, we have a lot of uh, Christian-dominated uh, areas, especially in the, in, the, in the south and also in the north. Those are concerns from the external and they, they have an influence in the internal uh, security of any nation. But secondly, most importantly, we see that uh, in, in the history, uh, the dollar has risen very, very high against the Naira in Nigeria. And Canada, from their own perspective, they know the amount of applications they are receiving from Nigerians by means of what kind of claims they are making. You know, in, the, they, they, in, in your application, there's always purpose of visit. They are receiving tons and tons of applications. Of course, that shows that that country is not stable. So based on all this that they have assessed, uh, Nigeria is still, we are really having issues that 
the current government need to deal with. Because currently, I cannot say that it's stable. It is not stable because they have their intelligence network working 24-7. And so they gather intelligence and they share intelligence and they can risk the country risk profile. I think that's the angle they are coming from. You, you touched a very important aspect that I didn't even think about. People want to jackwa like everybody is talking about now. And there's always <laughs> yeah. a column for the purpose of going. I'm very sure, or maybe it is possible that a lot of these people are not just uh, trying to say we are coming to study, we are coming to work and all that. They want to say there is problem in Nigeria, whether there is a problem or not. I remember a time when somebody with a name, a southwestern name, a Yoruba name, uh, went and said that uh, he was seeking asylum and it was given, was it in America or something, that there was Boko Haram in his village. There was Boko Haram fight in, a, in, a, in his local government around his area, so that's why he had to run. And he, he had a Yoruba name. And Boko Haram, I've not heard in the Southwest the way uh, someone uh, that is so bad that someone will have to run and seek asylum. So possibly uh, what you mentioned might just be true, that they are in the application they are using it to assess the level of security in Nigeria. But how can we guard against that? Because it seems to be the, be the easiest way to leave Nigeria and go to another country if you are not a professional. Can we guard against that? Um, I think uh, the, in, their, in their kind of sector, everything works in their sector. That everyone always finds a fit in their country when you come. And um, over here, at least you need some high level of education before you can assign to some positions. But they, they make it so easy that uh, from the medium, small, and the large scale enterprises, everything is working. And so everyone will always find a fit way to work. And that's why you see this uh, Jaffa thing is running out of place in Nigeria. I think from that is one point, like I said, from the purpose, uh, they can see a lot of applications, especially also the American embassy. They know a lot of applications that they're receiving and their purpose. And they can, we cannot say that they are blind to the, to the inflation rate in Nigeria and the unemployment, especially the, the dollar rates. They are the ones that use dollar. They're the ones controlling the world economy. And they know how this is affecting the Nigerian economy. And so from there, they know that it's not stable. At least the economy of Nigeria is not stable based on the dollar exchange rate. And so uh, the Jaffa thing is not something that the only way the Jaffa thing can reduce is to have a stable economy. So like I said in Wally, the last show, I said security is mostly influenced by bad economy or social welfare of the people. So the social, well, social standard is low. The economy is poor. And these are all uh, indicators of insecurity of any country. Okay, well, <laughs> I guess there are some things that we cannot control now, except the, the government, and not just the federal government, but to the local levels, uh, will stand up to their responsibility and do what is right and make sure there's employment, not just giving employment, but giving a conducive environment that industries can thrive so as to also employ people, because like they say, government has no business doing business. But right now, um, the, the, the U.S. and Canada have issued this advisory to their people. What is the implication on the global scene on Nigeria, uh, these two world powers giving this kind of uh, advice to their people? Oh, I think uh, when, when strong nations like this will give advice to their people, they have a lot of intelligence that we don't know. And especially uh, from the presidential angle, what is really given this is that when the head is affected, they feel that the whole nation is not stable. Why? The Supreme Court judgment and the uh, credential scandal of the president in the US court and all of that. And so uh, these, are, these are indicators that anything can happen. I don't know if they have received any intelligence of uh, military uh, doing something or, I mean, all of these are things that uh, is very strong for us as, a, as analysts. When we look between, in between the lines, you cannot really see because not everything you get. 
But when they issue this kind of advisory, I tell you there is something very terrible going on. It could be within, it could be outside Nigeria. The reinforcement could be outside Nigeria. It could be within Nigeria. So we don't know what is going on right now. Whether they have information that Nigeria is going to split, I don't know why they're giving such uh, information. Is Nigeria splitting? Are we going, are we dividing as they have continually uh, prophesied in other many years to come right now? Because from us in this Nigeria now, we are not in a war situation. We are not in a war situation right now that we could say, okay, foreigners cannot come. But if they could pass such a threat message, US and Canada, I think there is something they know we don't know. So we begin to look and ask questions, so look around the environment, and probably those who have insights to reach out to them, they should ask questions why such an, a, a, a message is passed. We should not just take it uh, for granted. Let us hear from them. Let those that are in authorities of security hear from them. And then they have something to say, and they will not put it in the public. They should gather what they have seen and then walk towards it. It's an indicator. It's a strategy that they can, they can build around what they have heard. So I urge the security forces, I urge the government forces, and even the Nigerian government itself, to look inside this issue and ensure that they take decisive steps. Because it will not only it, it will hurt our economy, already the economy is bleeding. And with this, Nigeria economy will be further, uh, I, I cannot use the word damaged, because it's a reputational damage right now. So the government should try everything to repair it mm. by rebuilding to, confidence. I was going to ask you what, how we can take advantage of this and make it work for us, but you've just answered that they need to uh, get whatever information that is available to the people who, had, who offered or who released this uh, uh, travel advisory and all that. But there are some people who also argue that it's a deliberate attempt to sabotage the progress of Nigeria and uh, make sure that uh, we, are, we, we are kept impoverished because when these things are done, it, it doesn't encourage uh, investors uh, to come into the country and do what they are supposed to do. So uh, some people have argued that it's a, a sabotage by the world powers to keep us in line. Uh, do you buy that? I don't buy that. Uh, and because there are also investors in Nigeria. These countries we are talking about, they are, they are key investors in Nigeria economy. The US, the Canada, uh, Canada and all those Western nations, they have huge investment in Nigeria. Technology-wise, they have Google, they have Microsoft, they have those big names here in Nigeria. We have Oracle, all of those tech companies that are here, the oil and gas that they want running it. So I don't think uh, they are stakeholders in the Nigerian economy. But we have this attitude in our country, which you know uh, that if something like this that is that's very serious come out, we begin to read meanings that are not necessary. These people have had experience of the Twin Tower bombing. That is the September 11 bombing that happened in, in, uh, in the year 21. They are, not, uh, they are not, they don't take threat messages uh, for granted because one of their learned from lesson learned, it was something like this that happened. It was similar, where they saw a lot of activity happening around the Twin Tower, unusual movement, unusual activities. And they had intelligence, after Israel, took decisive step and saved their people, while the America, they were like back and forth, back and forth until that bombing happened. So right now, I'm sure they have been sharing with our people, and maybe they are not willing, or they are not taking advice, or they are not willing to take decisive decision and then correct some of these issues. And so what they can say, so that the government will look into this matter, is to say, okay, our citizens don't go to Nigeria. It's not safe for us. I think when they make this public statement and public announcement, the media will carry it, just like what we are talking about. The media will carry it, the print media will carry it, the television media will carry it. And so the government will be forced to look into it and then deal with the issues they are complaining about. I think it's a strategy too, not to sabotage us, but at least they are careful to, they, they, human life is very important, it's critical to them. They are doing everything to protect our citizens in their country. And so we should also take the same measure or appropriate measure to protect their own citizens in Nigeria. But they see that not happening. And so what could they say? It's just a, a diplomatic way of saying, please don't go to Nigeria, our citizens don't go to Nigeria, so that the government will ask questions and then take some steps about it. Mm. 
Well, the argument with some people, as we wrap up, is that uh, um, last time they predicted, and they've been predicting, that is foreign powers and foreign intelligence, that we are going to uh, be separated. We are going to break uh, into so many countries, uh, but Nigeria is still standing, especially in 2014, 2015, it was projected that Nigeria was going to break into at least two uh, countries, but it didn't happen. So uh, some people are saying sometimes their intelligence is just false. Um, but I I even if the intelligence is poor, it's based on the, the indices they have. Even if they say we are not, Nigeria is already, it's not, a, it's not a nation that is standing together. How do you call breakup? Is it until people part away or they fight with arms? When this section of the, the region, this country, this region is not agreeing with this region, this region gets into power, he employs only his people in his region. The other region gets into power, he employs only his people in his region. There is no unity, as we can see. There is no unity in Nigeria. And so how do you call, how can we make, how can we move forward? We can't really move forward. So how do we describe uh, uh, division? It's just by principle, it's by principle that everyone should go on his own path. But what we have on ground now is that we are not together. It's already a divided nation. And I'm sorry to speak this, I'm not, an, um, I'm not a prophet of doom, but I think it is important that the authorities that are in power should come together. They should come together and reunite Nigeria. So many, there are so many broken pieces. People are leaving Nigeria, running out of Nigeria. Uh, not only the economic issue, they feel they are not safe. They feel Nigeria is not together. If Nigerians are together, Nigerians won't be leaving Nigeria to other countries. There are so many poor countries that are even worse than Nigeria. But they prefer to go and have a living, have another life in that country. Except those of us who, who so much believe in Nigeria, we are patriotic. And that's why we are still here talking to each other and go. And so many people just don't, they have lost faith in Nigeria, so they are leaving. So we pray that the government of the day will be an area and you truly unite Nigeria. Politics apart, this is time for business. The business of uniting Nigeria is very important. Okay, uh, that's a, a wonderful way to end this section of the. Uh, the program. Uh, we'd like to thank you so much, Mr. Augustine Nega, for coming on the show. My pleasure, Nyamgu. Thank you so much. Yeah. Okay, that was Augustine Agbe Ega, a security expert, talking with us about the travel advisories issued by Canada and U.S. to their citizens. And what we need to do, as he said, really is with the people who have this information and see why they put that information out and see how if it is something that can be curbed it should be curbed instead of just denying it that is it's not in our country uh, blood of jesus <laughs> like we like to say not my portion like we like to say okay so we'll take a short break when we return we'll be joined hopefully by nika gule who will be talking about uh, the nlc tuc threat of strike stay with us